Real quick, I wanted to discuss what Dennis Lynn briefly touched on in his athletic piece today. He mentioned that Tommy Pham remains an option for the San Diego Padres. And obviously the question there is, should the Padres do it? And the answer to that question, I think, is an easy one. Yes, the Padres should do it. I know it's not a left-handed hitter, and we know that the Padres have a lot of righties and not very many lefties. But Mike Schilt has a history with Tommy Pham. Seems like Schilt likes Tommy Pham. Seems like Tommy Pham likes Mike Schilt. It seems like A.J. Preller really likes Tommy Pham. And I don't think Tommy Pham dislikes A.J. Preller. Um, and yes, his time in San Diego was a little bit of a disappointment. But I'm someone that believes in second chances, especially when it's not like this guy did something like hugely wrong off the field. Um, yeah, you might not totally agree with some of the the ways that he spends his days or his time away from the baseball field, but it, it's life, you know. We can just disagree with the way that people choose to spend their time and, and where they choose to go. With Tommy Pham as a baseball player and this team, what does this team need? That edge, right? And I think it's been brought up by Mike Schilt, by some people in the media about like having that edge. And... It doesn't seem like there was enough of that last year. I think there's guys in that clubhouse right now that can provide that. So I'm not saying that like Tommy Pham is the only guy that would be able to provide that for this Padres team, but we know it would be there. Was there enough urgency last year for this Padres team? No, there wasn't. Is Tommy Pham a guy that would just let guys slack off and be like, no, it's April, whatever, things will come around? Doesn't seem like he's that guy. And... Uh, Manny Machado was on Ben and Woods this morning and he was kind of admitting to that like how he was even saying publicly how he thought things were going to turn around and it's okay it's early um, it doesn't seem like that attitude is going to be happening this year at least I hope that's not what the attitude is going to be and I hope that the attitude is going to be no we got to start turning it around the performances are not acceptable instead of laying back on the oh well things will turn around um, you know line that you can tell the media um, but getting back to Tommy Pham like so the personality it feels like that's a fit remember the whole Jock Peterson thing where he slapped Jock Peterson in the face part of that I believe was because he was defending some Padres teammates or at least the Padres organization because Jock Peterson in that chat was talking a little bit of crap about the Padres and Tommy Pham didn't like that. That was part of the reason, I believe, from, I think, things that I have read in the past about that. You can go look that up. I'm sure it's somewhere on social media or there's an article about that. But that is in the back of my head as well. There's been some fan interactions, but I hope that Tommy doesn't look at, at the Padres fan base just because of, you know, a few people that decided to make some dumb decisions, make some dumb remarks to Tommy. I hope he doesn't reflect that totally on everyone in this Padres fan base. Um, I, I think there's a lot of Padres fans that would love to have Tommy Pham back with this team because they know what he can provide. And let's just, let's act like Tommy Pham was the most boring person, didn't have that edge to him. Guess what? He's coming off of a good postseason. And this is a major league veteran player. And how much is he going to cost? I mean, last year with the Mets, he cost, what, six, seven mil? And it doesn't seem like there's a lot of interest in Tommy Pham right now. Cody Bellinger already signed with the Cubs, so it's not like we can sit back and be like, well, maybe teams are just waiting for Cody Bellinger to sign. Now, maybe he's sifting through offers that we don't know about. But the Padres, how much room do they have to spend? They have room to add Tommy Pham. Now, I don't know if they have room to add Michael Lorenzen and Tommy Pham, but it sure seems like they're okay with the pitching that they have right now. Now... A.J. Preller, he's always looking to improve, and he'll probably say, we're okay with the outfield that we have now. But what am I more willing to take a chance on? The young arms the Padres have, like Johnny Brito and Randy Vasquez, am I more willing to take a chance on that, or am I more willing to take a chance on Oscar Mercado having to play the outfield because someone gets hurt? Or what if Jackson Merrill ends up struggling? Now, I'm, I'm someone that believes in Jackson Merrill. I think he can come up and help this Padres team. Um, I, I would not read into everything. Uh, or excuse me. What I should say is, spring training-wise, I would not make everything 
uh, into you know his spring training stats. So if he's like two for eight from the plate, I'm not going to sit here and say he shouldn't make the roster because he's struggling early on in Cactus League games. It should be more about what at bats is he putting together. When he's putting the ball in play, are they line drives? Is it hard contact? When he's playing the field, how is he looking there? It seems like he's looking good there. What's his mentality? Is the confidence there? And so, like, he's checking some of those boxes. So, but getting back to what if he does, because there's, we know that there's that part of the fan base that they, instead of trying to look at things optimistically, they look at things pessimistically, if that's a word. Glass half empty. Well, what if things don't work out? Things probably aren't going to work out, so the Padres need to have the backup plan, right? Well, what's their backup plan? It's pro far and left, Azokar in center, Tatis in right. Well, then who do you have on the bench? Oscar Mercado and Cal Mitchell? I'd like to have, I, I'd like this outfield group a lot more if Tommy Pham was in left field and if Jackson Murrow was in center field, if Tatis was in right, if Azokar was on the bench, if Profar was on the bench. I like that outfield group, those five outfielders, way more than if, like, Oscar Mercado. Um, I know people in this spot, they would say, no disrespect to Oscar Mercado, but you're kind of disrespecting him by saying that he shouldn't be on the roster. I, I, I'm just telling the truth from, like, my opinion. Oscar Mercado, Tommy Pham, who would you rather have on this roster? Now, Tommy Pham wouldn't be taking Oscar Mercado's spot. He'd be taking the starting left fielder's spot, not the last guy on the bench. But I'd rather have, like, a Zokar Profar be bench guys, last guy, fifth outfielder, than have Mercado be a fifth outfielder or have Kel Mitchell be a fifth outfielder, someone like that, right? Um, so, yeah, Tommy, I guess it depends on the price. Is Tommy asking for... $12 million on a one-year deal? Is he asking for a multi-year deal? I don't know if the Padres want to give him multiple years. But if the Padres can give him $10 million and he's okay with that, I we, we don't know the answer to that. But if that's the case, like they have the room to add Tommy Pham. It's just a matter of do they want to add maybe, I don't know how much Eddie Rosario would cost. Let's say he costs a little bit less than Tommy Pham. The question there, I guess, is do you want to add maybe Michael Lorenzen and Eddie Rosario, or do you want to just add Tommy Pham? Assuming Tommy Pham would be more expensive than Eddie Rosario, maybe he's more than $10 million. But you'd think you'd want to find a home pretty quick here, and there's other, I mean, there's Adam Duvall that's still out there. I know he's a pretty good bat out there as well, so there's some options, but. I think Tommy Pham obviously gets a lot of play because he used to play for the Padres, and I think a lot of Padres fans know the personality. Let's not forget that relationship that he has already with Mike Schilt. 